Staying in the DRC, violence erupted again in the town of Beni in the Democratic Republic of Congo today. Protesters were out on the streets demanding the United Nations withdrawal from the city. Last week, activists gathered in front of the headquarters of the United Nations Stabilization Mission in Goma to call for justice for the death of a colleague during the Beni protests. Residents are angry over the perceived failure of UN peacekeepers to protect civilians from the deadly rebel attacks. The UN mission has not been participating in the DRC's army's offensive against rebel groups launched late last month other than providing intelligence and medical assistance. We're now joined in studio by Africa analyst Jean Boasa, who also hails from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Mr. Boasa, it's always a pleasure having you on the globe. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Simpiwe, to have us here on uh, the globe and SABC to try to enlighten and bring some light and hope to the issues of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And I would like to ask a question that's not the habit. What is the day today? It is Monday the 2nd, the, the, the 3rd of December. That's Monday the 2nd of the second December. 2nd of December, pick your pardon, yeah. Okay, the 2nd of December, for our viewers, marks the 59 years during which Patrice Emery Lumumba was arrested in the city called Port Franqui while he was crossing as he was being pursued by imperialists or they didn't want him to hold the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And again, while we are talking about the MONUSCO today, we must remember that in 1960, we still had the, the same peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So it's deja vu. And there's no sense of pride or sense of humanity in what is happening in, in the Congo because it's a disgrace for the entire international community and African states that are not participating into quelling the conflict and the tensions that have started for the past 20 years. So it's not something that is new, it's something that started in 1999 when the UN's Security Council made the resolution 1925, of which the mandate was to stabilize the country so that we would have elections, which elections occurred only in 2006. And we must know and remember, because it's very important that we speak about history. You know, Mr. Bossa, the general narrative now is that uh, MONUSCO has failed the people of the DRC. I mean, they've, they've operated in the DRC for the past two decades, and the general feeling is that uh, they haven't done enough to protect civilians from, uh, you know, rebel groups who continue to launch attacks on civilians in the DRC. So I also have the view that they should also pick up and go. Well, I would tend to be to differ a little bit on that because I think that during uh, Mr. Alias Joseph Kabila tenure in power, he also wanted the MONUSCO to vacate uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Okay. So it is important at this level that we educate the population because all these attacks that are happening, there's a sense and a perception that the could be manipulated by the former president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This is my view and my opinion. So it could be manipulating all these rebels, mercenaries, to come and kill and slaughter like goats Congolese people so that the population will be angry out of exasperation for the fact that they haven't been protected because that's the mission and the mandate of the UN. And therefore, they will ask the removal of the MONUSCO, then we'll be free to operate. So I would stand to say, let's the MONUSCO... So are you insinuating that these attacks are deliberately orchestrated? They're deliberately orchestrated in the fact that today we are speaking about the Muslim or the Islamist in uh, the eastern side of the Congo, which are they call the eight. ADF Ndalu. We must also mention the fact that we've got in the government of the Congo a person called Roberwa, Nyarugabo, and all these people whose 
uh, nationality is Rwandan nationality, but they tend to say that they are Congolese because they participated here in 2002 to the Sun City Peace Dialogue, and he became deputy president. And since that time, he's been holding a position, which is the minister of Home Affairs, which is a critical ministry. Just imagine that I'm in your country here and I become the Minister of Home Affairs. I'm a foreigner. How do you feel? Because I'm the one who's going to deliver an ID for you. I'm going to deliver a birth certificate for you. And this has been happening for the past 20, 20 years. And therefore, we are in a prison, an open sky prison, whereabout the Congolese are not benefiting from their own country and are hold hostages in their own countries because we welcomed the Rwandan people during 1994 uh, so-called genocide uh, from Rwanda and we gave them a place and today they have kicked most of the Congolese people out of the country. Imagine the implication of these atrocities happening in the Congo. So we will have more influx of migrant displacement people coming here in South Africa to seek refuge. And this is something that I'm not sure that the SADC is ready to get more influx of people. So it is very important and critical that we are calling upon the SADC people and leaders to make a way that peace could reign so that that peace will prevent migrants to come here. I think it's very important, Mr. Bossa, that uh, we need to start looking at this uh, through different lenses. On the one hand, the, the Congolese are pretty much justified in calling for the United Nations to pick up and go because, I mean, the rebel, the rebel groups have been launching attacks on civilians for the past decades and uh, nothing seems to be uh, working to help, uh, you know, to help the, uh, the civilians from these rebel attacks. And then on the other hand, the United Nations is also lamenting the fact that, uh, well, particularly MONUSCO is lamenting the fact that uh, funding towards the uh, operation team in the, in the DRC has been diminished over the past years. As a matter of fact, they're also uh, looking at, uh, you know, reducing the number of troops operating in that country. I mean, we, we need to look at uh, these issues from the different angles. Well, I would say that as a Congolese now, if I were to return in my country, I would have the same position like those that are on the ground, saying, you have had your 20 years, it's about time, you have not protected us, let's call a self-determination uh, willingness of the Congolese to defend their, themselves in the same way you defended yourself here to, through apartheid. So this is for me a critical that at this point of view, this multifaceted of uh, the crisis in the Congo should not be a perception of uh, anybody else other than the Congolese themselves. We have suffered enough and this is very important for us to mention that the MONUSCO must exist, the DRC, and if anything, then we will take the responsibility of saying, whoever is not Congolese, please go back to your country, because Rwanda is fine now. Rwanda is a, an economy that is stable now. Why aren't the Rwandan people going back to Rwanda? Instead, Paul Kagame was asking those that were in Libya to be coming to Rwanda. Why can't he take those that are in Congo since 1994 and place them in those beautiful cities that are clean, that are safe, that are stable, that are peaceful, so that we'll have peace in our country? So if we look at those facets, yes, they have reduced uh, the budget, but it's one billion budgets that they have had. It's 20,000 uh, contingent troops that have been in the Congo for 20 years. But how many millions of people have we lost? Close to 12 million. It's not the number that counts. Here, His Excellency President Ramaphosa had to go to uh, our niece, Ramabulana, who was killed. That was just one individual. And there's a fund on his name. But when are we going to have a fund for the millions of Congolese that have been uh, uh, killed? We want now an international inquest into the atrocities that have happened in the Congo for the past 20 years. Then we will judge and try those people, the Rwandan people that have been there, the Paul Kagame, Joseph Kabila, who's supposed to be today behind bars, which also bring the question 
because uh, Jean François Lacroix, the the envoy for uh, the Monusco, said that they have not received an authorization from our government. For God's sake, you have been given a mandate by the UN Security Council. Why would you wait for the president to give you another authorization? Because I would believe that the UN is an umbrella to a, a country. So if the UN is not an umbrella, what are the MONUSCO doing there? So it's fine for the commoner to say, you've been given a mandate, you did not uh, fulfill your mandate, then go. But I mean, go. Yeah, just listening to you, I get the sense that you're also of the view that uh, Monusco should just pack up and go. You're also suggesting that uh, the DRC can self-determine, or rather you're calling for self-determination of uh, the Congolese people. But then uh, does the DRC have the capacity of self-determining itself, or rather uh, uh, self-protecting itself from the rebel movements? I mean, there's a new battle now against Ebola that uh, the country is currently battling. Well, uh, I've spoken about Ebola uh, several times yeah. in the media, and I think that uh, it's not the, the time for this debate, but let's have a focus on this issue of uh, the rebel in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. These rebels, first, first of all, they are not Congolese. They are external forces that have been there since 1994. And not only that they are rebels, but they have got people that are in the government, and this is very important. A person like Mr. Rubewa is not Congolese, is Banyamulenge, and that's the reason for which you have uh, forces that we call the Mai Mai, that have been defending their lands in the eastern side of the Congo. These are not rebels. Most of the time they call them rebels, but these are patriots that are defending our land, and if, I will tell you... Defending the land against who? Because they're killing civilians. No, they're not killing civilians. A Mai Mai would not kill a civilian because a Mai Mai is from the legacy of Patrice Emery Lumumba, is from the legacy of Pierre Moulele, is from the legacy of Simon Kimbangu, is from the legacy of Kimpa Vita. These are our icon that defended our land. And I have forgotten Simon Kimbangu, who was like our messiah for the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And they, we have rules not to kill a civilians for the Mai Mai of today, as well as the Mai Mai of 1960s. What do you think should be done then in terms of protecting the sovereignty of Congolese? It's we as the Congolese, and I stand here boldly and say that as Congolese, I had my house that was bombed in 19, uh, 1998, but I still and continue to defend the Congo because I do think the time that we have fear enter in our soul and in our psyche and in our spirit, that's the time we die. But we are here standing and saying, we as Congolese will make a shield. And in the diaspora, we actually gathering so that we will walk sometimes from Johannesburg, a trek to the Monusco in Pretoria and say, if you are not able to defend the Congolese, then eventually it's about time that you vacate our land. Is because the DRC it's all about on the, the brink? Is the DRC on the brink? Is uh, it much better off post uh, Joseph Kabila? It's not better off post Joseph Kabila. It's okay. even worse because I do think that uh, uh, there's a possibility that we are in the abysses of uh, uh, this country to disappear because there's a possibility that they balkanize, but they have failed to balkanize the Congo. They have failed to cut the eastern side. That is rich in mineral and make it become a zone tampon between the Tutsi people and the Bantu people because the war is all about the minerals, but where they have slaughtered Bantu people and the international community hasn't said anything because there's a provision in the United Nations uh, rules, that's the provision of the protection of the minority. And it appears that the Tutsi that are in the Democratic Republic of the Congo are the minority. Yet, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, we've got tribes that are even minor to the Tutsi. I will say the Baungani. There are less than 1,000 people in the entire country, but they are not being protected. We've got the Pygmies. There are less than 1,000 people. They are not protected. So the Tutsi people must not come and impose that they are the minority in the Congo. We Mr. welcome Wasser. them.
thank you so much for your time. It's and a for pleasure, your insights. sir. Much appreciated. Thank you. Well, that, that was uh, Africa analyst John Boasa, who also hails from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He's just sharing his insights and, he view, and his views with the, regards to the developments coming from the DRC. And uh, as we've heard, the Congolese are now demanding the MONUSCO team to depart the DRC. This is the Global SAPC News. We'll have